Hey webheads, comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. Guys, you're back with me, a sick Mike Spider Slayer, recovering from COVID. I've been stuck in my bedroom now for, I think, three days. Uh, hopefully, I got another day or so left to be in here, and then I'm good to go. Um, <coughs> starting to feel a little bit better, but still not so great. Anyway, I wanted to share with you a long box of comics that I did not go through before I did my garage sale. I did a mystery one where it was just miscellaneous. This one is a Marvel one. So there was quite a bit of comics I did not go through before that garage sale. So we're gonna find out what's in this Marvel long box. It's been quite a while. I don't remember what's in here. We're gonna pull out the important ones uh, at the end of the video and see if there's any worth to them. So hopefully you'll find this fun and uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right, let's get started here with some Obi-Wan and Anakin. Probably bought this because it might be worth some money in the future, or the story would be probably pretty good, but not so much. Star Wars Shattered Empire, don't even remember that. Don't even remember what it was about. It's got some cool-looking covers, though. That's a nice-looking cover. Let's check out what else we got there. More Shattered of the Empire. I was really into the Star Wars stuff when it first came out, when Marvel got the rights, and I bought everything Star Wars. And a lot of the titles were actually really good until they got into all these events. Now, I did have issue three, and I sold it. So that's why you don't see it in here. There's issue five. There's the big one right there, baby. Woo, look at that. That's a clean copy, man. No ticks, it looks like. I'm going to have to analyze that one later. Let's see. More dark. Well, it's another number six. Is it a variant, though? I don't remember. We'll find out later. Darth Vader issue seven. This first Darth Vader run was really good. And a lot of these books have some kind of value to it. But yeah, the, the book was so well written. And the covers of them are super awesome, man. They're so nice looking. It's cool. It's Princess Leia one. More Darth Vader there. Look at that cover, man. That's like out of a movie. Really cool. Look at that. I love how his cape just blows in the wind like that. So cool. Vader down. If you want to talk about... A really good story that you want to read with Darth Vader. That's it, man. That was awesome. Star Wars, Scotty Young. Let's get that stuff out of the way. That's cool with Darth Vader and the at ats there. Or the ATATs, whatever you want to call them. More Star Wars. See, I told you. People asked me if I collected Star Wars comic books. I did. Again, into that Bounty Hunter stuff came out. Now it just got awful. Now all they do is cross over with events. They should just do their own stuff like they did in the past. What was that? Princess Leia's ex? Or Princess Leia. Han Solo's first uh, wife. That's what it was. Look at all these Star Wars books, man. Pretty freaking cool. That's a nice looking cover right there. Is that Padme? Or is that Leia? See, I was still perturbed about that Darth Vader issue 6. I'm like, what is it about that book? Something's off about it. And you'll find out later when we go over the books. That's a pretty cool cover right there. That's a nice looking cover. And we got issue 22 at this point. That's an annual. Oh, now we get into some Secret War stuff. Issue 1. Big deal coming out, you know, big deal with these Secret Wars books. You want to hold on to these guys because, you know, there's just talks about Secret Wars going into the Marvel U or the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So these books could be worth something in the future if there's incursions that happen. This was all Jonathan Hickman's deal, Battle World, everything came out of this. This was a very interesting time for Marvel Comics. I got all these toy variants. These are super cool, man. I love these things. 
the Miles Morales one. I should have looked that up on how much that one's worth. I don't think I did. You got the Doctor Doom, you got Doc Ock. Very hard to tell though what number it is. I think it says it on that top left corner, of course, where the price tags were. Wolverine one. I mean, looking at it, just like that, it almost looks like a toy. So cool though. You got Falcon one. Captain America. What else we got? A Captain Marvel. Jay Foster Thor. That was pretty cool. I should have looked that up too. Wonder what that could be. Then you got Armor Wars in the Secret Wars universe. So what it was was Secret Wars. There's all these incursions that happened. The world, all the Earths collided, and then what happened is Doctor Doom created his own like Earth, and there was all these different worlds on his Earth. And one was like Armor Wars. One was the Thor Core. It was really, really freaking cool. I loved it. I thought it was a pretty interesting premise and idea. When you bought the original comic, the Secret Wars comic book, I think you got a battle world map, and it showed you like the, all the separate worlds. Very interesting story, man. We're still talking about Hank Johnson Hydra Secret Wars. This was cool. Little Avengers vs. X-Men Marvel. Look at that Scotty Young stuff. Man, that's pretty badass. You got the tree houses. If you guys love Scotty Young stuff, you might want to try to find this. A Force issue one, that's definitely a key. We're gonna look that up. There's got the previous issues after or the following issues after that. So that's pretty cool. Then you got X-Men 92. That was the first series that came out of Secret Wars, because you had the 92 characters. That was a big deal. You also got the Spider-Man series too with uh, Mayday Parker being a, a little girl and Mary Jane being a, uh, a superhero alongside with Peter. Age versus Ultron. Age of Ultron versus Marvel Zombies in Battle World. Future Imperfect, Gwen Stacy variant. That's pretty sweet. I love that. Future Imperfect issue one. On the regular cover. Looks like that's issue two. That's a nice Greg Land cover. Oh, Weird World. This artwork actually fit the book perfectly. This was a pretty good story, believe it or not. Monsters That Dwell was another one that was good that came out of Secret Wars. Just different and original stories. Show out artwork. Very gorgeous. <laughs> Dude's in a freaking pot. You got these Amazon chicks, or that's what I call them. Old Man Logan. This is the Secret Wars one, not the original story. However, it's still an awesome book. Andrea Sorrentino artwork. So well done. That's an awesome cover. That's really nice as well. And you got Planet Hulk. We'll check out this one. We'll see if it was worth anything. Look at that, man. That is sick. Such great art there. Look at that. Ant-Man from Nick Spencer. I remember that. It was actually a good run. It was comical. Just like when he did Superior Foes of Spider-Man, that was really good, too. Avengers... Undercover by Dennis Hopeless. That was great. And I bought that because he did Avengers Arena. Then you got the Uncanny Avengers. And then you got this Avengers. This was the whole thing that led up into Secret Wars. Before the Earths collided. So they had like 8 months ahead. 9 months ahead. Or 7 months ahead. Like there was this huge build up to this event. And that's what Marvel did really well in the past is do these these events like they built up to them. They don't do that so much anymore. This got you excited for the you know yearly event. Now we have them every month. Oh man, we got all new X Men. I think I sold the. I think these are later issues because I sold the new or the 
lower number issues when it comes to this series in the garage sale in another box. So these are all the other ones. This is from Bendis. I think he start, started okay, and then it just fizzled out. It got completely boring and decompressed, and it just wasn't interesting. Um, you know, but I kept on reading it because it was X-Men, you know? It's just like, why stop? And then we led into here this uh, Black Vortex title. This is probably not worth anything, but if you want to read a pretty good event, Black Vortex was badass. Um, again, it was another one of these books where it took the superheroes and kind of made them into villains. They went into this vortex of a mirror or whatnot and, and just changed our heroes. And I thought that was really cool. And you can see it went on for quite a few issues here. It was definitely an interesting story. It had Star-Lord in there. And then here we have Captain America issue one. Well, that one's not bagging on board for some random reason. There's a couple of the other issues. It's an okay series. It entertained me for a little while. I have that first appearance, I guess, of him being Captain America in Human Special. And we got some carnage going on in here. This was a good run, this Daredevil run. Uh, this one was done by Wade and Samney, the one who does firepower right now. So if you like that artwork, you would like this run. This was a pretty interesting run. And then we got some Deadpool comics in here. I still tried to read Deadpool all I could. Um, but I just come to the realization is I just don't like the character's humor. You know, he may be a badass, but in the comic, it just doesn't work for me. In the movie, he's cool. But yeah. And then we got... Hobgoblin. This series was really good too, man. It was only like four issues or something like that. But that's always a recommend read. Random Hulk issue. This is when Hulk got shot in the head. Uh, and then he became like super smart scientist Hulk. It, it was pretty good. Uh, and for some reason it just abruptly ended. So let's see. Yep, more of that series. It's pretty cool. Deadpool was in there. You can tell I liked it. Part of it, too, again, it's got Bagley artwork in there. So that's why I enjoyed it so much. More Inhuman stuff. And there's your Superior Iron Man variant. And Demon in the Bottle homage. And then there's issue two and three and four. This was a really good book. It was just when they first started doing, you know, good guys as villains. And the first one to do it was um, Dan Slott with Superior Spider-Man. And then came Superior Iron Man. And then the Black Vortex. This was another really good Marvel event. Original Sin. We're still dealing with ramifications of Original Sin. So good, man. Especially that first issue. Holy crap. What a cliffhanger by the time you got to the end of that one. Look, let's look at all these issues I got. Rocket Raccoon. It was a fun little series. Then he got S.H.I.E.L.D. So that's when the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show was out. So everyone was all over that. The Calvary. Ah, here we go. Spider-Gwen. Issue 1 as the homage to 300. There's another variant. It's gorgeous. Spider-Gwen uh, main cover. And there's the other Spider-Gwen issues in there. And you got Spider-Woman. That was a really good run. I really enjoyed that run. This is when she changed and she wound up getting a new outfit. And I think this was the run where she gets pregnant. She meets Porcupine, becomes her husband and whatnot. Really cool stuff, man. Every Spider-Woman series I feel that comes out is good and then it just ends because no one gives it a real chance. Ultimate Spider-Man. Yes, those are some of the best Miles Morales comics out there. Those are the ones that Michael Bendis did that was so good. There it is. Spider-Man issue one, the second ongoing title. 
There's issue two. Looks like issue three with Goblin. Ultimate Cataclysm. That's when the Ultimate Universe dies. More Miles Morales, Spider-Man. You can see I have a lot of love for the character and what Bendis did with the character when he was in his own universe. And as soon as he switched, it just all went to shit. It's just not the same. Not at all. That's a cool cover. All right. And then we got Silk Issue 1. We got the Scotty Young. We got Silk Issue 2 and Issue 3 and Issue 4. Here's all the Spider-Man books. Spider-Man 2099, Issue 1. These covers are freaking awesome. This was written by Peter David. This was a well-written series. I read a lot of this and then it did fizzle out towards the end or it got canceled one of the two but in the beginning this was really strong i don't know how many people bought it though like i said we got here all edge of spider-verse or spider-verse yeah spider-man the war we got that guy this horror book that one was really good so I want to check this one out and see what this one is worth. That robot that was in the future. And you got Spider-Verse itself. Spider-Verse team up. Superior foes of Spider-Man. Nick Spencer. We got some more of those. That was a hilarious series. There's Thor issue 2, man. Never even knew I had that. I had Thor issue 1. I had two of them. And I got some random Thor issue 2 in there. That's just freaking weird. Death of Wolverine. That was a okay series. But then they brought him. He like never really died because you brought Old Man Logan into the whole thing. Oh, that's a nice Emma Frost action figure. And then you got Jean Grey. All right, Webhead. So I'm back and we did find some keys in here. Now, if there's other keys that I missed, let me know in the comments below. But I did find some stuff, nothing that was too earth shattering, but there was some pretty good books, especially if you get them graded, right? Okay, so the first book that we're going to talk about here is A-Force. This is issue one. This comes out of the Secret Wars time. Um, this book at a raw price right now, you could probably sell it for about 13 bucks. And I think this is a book that has room to grow with all the female heroes and whatnot. So that was pretty cool. The next book where for some reason there's a lot of speculation that Marvel is going to head into the Secret Wars. So we got Secret Wars issue one of eight. This is the main cover. I had some other variants in there. You could, you saw like... I had action figure variants. I'm not sure how much they go for. But just this issue one. Um, this one goes for. $20. So that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Alright. Next. This one was a pretty cool one. All A lot of this stuff is based off of Secret War stuff. This one goes to Old Man Logan, issue one. This is the variant edition. Now, this is not the original version. This is from Secret Wars, where Old Man Logan actually makes his way slowly into the 616. So I thought this one was pretty cool. I originally did pay $10 for this book. It now goes for about $15. All right. Next one I wound up finding was Superior Iron Man issue one. There's been all these talks with Tom Cruise being Superior Iron Man. And Tom Taylor wrote this. But I really loved this series. The series was very well written. Um, the key thing of it is, is this is kind of where all the villain, all the good guys started to become villains. And Tom Taylor was one of the first people to do that uh, way back when. I love this cover as it pays homage to Demon in the Bottle. So that's why I bought it. And for some reason, I guess I just don't have that original cover. So yeah, this was the variant. And this one it goes for
Okay, the next book that I got is a pretty big book, and it pisses me off because it's not going to have the value that I want it to be. This was Miles Morales, The Ultimate Spider-Man, issue one. Now, this is the second ongoing title of the character, okay? So that's why it's a key. And this book, at a fair market value, raw copy, goes for $58, okay? High grade. Unfortunately, what ruins this book for me is because of my stupid ass fingerprints are right here in the corner and it's smeared all in the corner box here as well. These freaking Marvel Comics and their cheap ass paper, that shows you how long that their print has run off of people's fingers. And this is probably a book that I read that was lying on the table and I just put it down or something, right? That's so frustrating. But nevertheless, cool book to have if you have it. It's worth that bit of money. So, yeah, pretty cool. All right. The next book that's kind of cool is Spider-Gwen. This is issue one. Uh, I think this is the first ongoing title of the character. Uh, so that's the significance of this one. This one has a fair market value in a raw copy at $35. And there's no freaking smearing on this one. So good for that one. The next one is I have an homage cover <clears throat> to Amazing Spider-Man issue 300, 300 excuse me, and uh, this one here is a $30 value, so that was pretty cool. I love the colors of this cover, so nice, right? And then I had another variant for Spider-Gwen just because I love the character, and we have this variant. I forgot what it is. I don't know if it's a Mike Mayhew. I'm not 100% sure which one it was. Uh, but this is a gorgeous cover, right? So nice. And this one is also a $30 comic. So that was pretty cool. Then we came across another spider character. This was Silk issue one. Don't have the main cover. However, I guess I liked the Scotty Young cover better. So I picked this one up at the time, paid $5 for it. And the Silk book is about a $13 value. So that's not bad. This is a book that really surprised me. I did not think that this book was going to be valued this high. And this one goes to Edge of Spider-Verse issue 5. This is the first appearance of that spider character from the future, right? And so this one here is worth $45 in a high grade. That is impressive. Really, really cool right there, man. I was excited to hear that one. Then for some reason, you guys knew that I had Thor issue one. I actually had two copies of that. I never thought I had Thor issue two for some dumb reason, but I did. I had Thor issue two. I was like, oh, that's cool because this is the full appearance of the character. It's, you know, Jane Foster Thor in a Thor comic. So I thought that was a pretty cool grab or a pretty good find in this box. $37 fair market value. So not bad, right? Especially when the movie's about to come out. Then, I found this Star Wars issue one, uh, written by Jason Aaron. And people asked me if I collected Star Wars comics. When Star Wars first came out from Marvel Comics, or they got the rights back, I was all into the series. I thought the series was really good. Then they started doing their events with a like bounty hunter and stuff like that. And, the, and Star Wars is just not nearly as good as it was when it first came out but i got this scotty young babies variant and uh i thought this one was really cool and this one is a 20 dollars value so that was really cool that and that was a surprise for me paid cover price for it at the time then you guys saw me pull out two darth vader issue sixes and for some reason i thought one was a variant cover but i couldn't see it saying variant it had the emperor on it totally different Darth Vader series. That one was from 2017. The other one I pulled out was the big key, the Darth Vader issue 6 from 2015, the first appearance of the Grand Inquisitor in the comics, which is a huge comic right now. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's going to lose its value because of what happened in the show. So you guys make a comment there uh, when you feel free you're ready to. And those are most of the like really decent books that I found in there. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments. 
But I had fun doing this. This is just something to pass the time while I'm sick. And uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you love my content, I'll leave you more content right here. Guys, keep buying, keep collecting, but most importantly, always read your comics. Guys, thank you so much. Bye.